Automating your bathroom lights. Probably one of those automations that is hard to figure out the right balance between happiness and being left in the dark. In this video, I'm going to show you how I tackled this problem. And stick around because I feel there's one simple method for ensuring your bathroom time is stress free that I don't see commonly offered as a solution. And I'm not talking more fiber. Although that probably would help. Okay, there are a few things we're going to need before we can automate our bathroom lights. First, you're going to need a bathroom. I mean, it's in the title, so I assume it's obvious. For this, I'm going to be using the basement bathroom in my theater. If you don't have a basement, feel free to use a different bathroom. BYOB, as they say. Second, you're going to need a smart switch. For this, I'm going with the new ELV Plus Diva Dimmer from Lutron. Lutron did send this to me to check out, as with all of the products I showcase in these videos though, they're not involved in any way with the video itself. The light in this bathroom is LED, and there was a manual dimmer in this bathroom already, although I'm not really sure why. The ELV Plus from Lutron is built with electronic low voltage lights in mind. The switch does require a neutral wire, so make sure you have one of those before going with this specific dimmer. There are other Lutron options and other brands out there that do offer solutions that don't require a neutral. If you are interested in the ELV Plus option, I'll share some thoughts and details in just a bit. But regardless of what switch you're going to use, you're going to want some sensors to help detect bathroom occupancy. For this bathroom, I'm going with two. First, this third reality matter enabled nightlight. This thing works great with Home Assistant and is the perfect motion sensor for a bathroom where you also need a nightlight and this SwitchBot contact sensor for the door. I'm not sure why I don't see the contact sensor on the door offered as a solution for this type of automation, because I suspect most people close the door when they're in the bathroom. There are other methods like humidity sensors, water sensors, heck, just a timer. But the motion sensor and the contact sensor are going to be the ones I use in my automations. Again, none of these companies are sponsoring this video, but all of these brands are products used daily in my smart home and that I found to be reliable. So let's build an automation. I'm going to be doing this from scratch using the Home Assistant Automation UI. To set up an automation, we're going to go to Settings. We're going to go down to Automations and Scenes. We're going to click Create Automation down in the bottom right. And then we're going to click Create New Automation. Then we're going to start with our triggers. We're going to add a trigger here and we're going to use entity. You could use device, but I prefer to use entity. And for these, we're going to use state. So the first one we're going to set up here, we're going to grab the occupancy sensor, the motion sensor for the bathroom using that third reality one. And I just know it's this one right here. You may have to identify which one. If you don't know the exact name, you'll have to identify that. Next up, we're going to add the motion sensor that is on that SwitchBot contact sensor because the SwitchBot contact sensor also has a motion sensor on it. So we're going to add that here as well. And we're going to set our from and to states. So we're going to do from clear to detected. And I'm going to give this an ID. Motion detected. Now we're going to add another trigger for this guy right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this to make it easy. And what I'm going to do here is change our to and from and change it to from detected to clear. And I'm going to set this for 10 minutes. So now we have a trigger that once the motion stops, this will trigger after 10 minutes of no motion. Then we're going to add a trigger for our door sensor. And for states here, we want it to go from open to closed. We'll give it an ID of door closed. And then we're going to duplicate this one again and change our from closed to open. And we'll change the trigger ID to, to door opened. And let's go ahead and we'll put, let's say three minutes on this one. 
So now we have four triggers for this automation. Anytime motion is detected, it will get triggered. After there's been no motion for 10 minutes, it will trigger again. This automation will trigger when the door goes from open to closed. And then when the bathroom door goes from closed to open, it'll trigger after three minutes. And you may have to tweak these as you go. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now we can move to the actions. And we're going to put all of the conditions around what happens in our actions or then do section because we want to evaluate the conditions for each of these. So let's start with just when the lights turn on. So we're going to add an action. We're going to use the choose action and we're going to get some conditions. For this first condition, we're going to use trigger by. And we're anytime motions detected or the door is closed, we want the lights to turn on. So we're going to do that first. Then here, we're going to add an action. We'll grab a device. Do theater bathroom lights. And the action is going to be turn on the bathroom lights. And we'll just start with that right there. I'm going to rename this guy right here. To turn on bathroom lights so that I can remember that's what that is doing. So next up, turning off the bathroom lights. Here, we're going to add an action. Actually, we're going to rename this guy right here to turn on bathroom lights. That way we know that that's what this option right here does. Then next up, we're going to add another option. And for our conditions, we're going to use trigger by. And we're going to use door opened and motion gone. Remember, motion gone is going to trigger after there's been no motion for 10 minutes. And door opened is going to trigger after that door has been opened for three minutes. The idea being that Somebody could go into the bathroom to brush their teeth or something like that, leave the door open, and then leave. And we want to be able to turn those lights off. Or they are going to go in there, close the door to take a shower or whatever. And that door will then open when they're done. At least that's the general idea. But we don't want these to turn off the lights when somebody might actually still be in there. Like, for example, if somebody's in there with the door closed and the motion stops, we don't want this to turn off the lights. So we're going to add a condition in here to check the state of that door. And we want to make sure that door is open. So now, this option right here, which I'm going to go ahead and rename turn off lights. When it's triggered by either the door opened or motion gone, it's going to need to make sure that the theater bathroom door is open before it continues with this option. And action then, device, we will choose the theater bathroom lights. And we're going to choose the action, turn off the bathroom lights. And there we go. We now have a basic automation that when motion's detected or the door is closed, our turn bathroom lights are going to turn on. And then when the motion stops or the bathroom door opens, after the time delay for each one of those triggers, it's going to check to make sure the door is open and turn the lights off. Super simple, but hopefully it gets all of our conditions and the lights don't turn off prematurely. And that's really it. We can hit save. We can give it theater, the name theater bathroom lighting, hit save, and we're all set to go.
I'm gonna rename this real quick though, cause I don't like, there. Save again, that looks a little better. All right, now that all we have left to do is test it. In this current setup, the motion sensor is not in the best place due to the way the plug faces, but it will turn on the lights as someone approaches the sink. And of course, as soon as you step in and close the door behind you, the lights will come on. Before we wrap this up, I wanted to give you a few more details on that ELV Plus Diva dimmer. The switch came out earlier this year, and as I mentioned earlier, it does require a neutral wire. For those curious, install is super easy. Lutron says it'll take about 15 minutes, and if you have to read the instructions, that's probably pretty accurate. The Lutron switches are, in my experience, some of the easiest to install. But let's be honest, LED lighting doesn't always work well with switch-based dimmers. And if you have a situation like that, the ELV Plus could be the switch you're looking for, because it includes some features I haven't seen on other smart dimmers, like the ability to set the phase to forward or reverse, Reverse typically helping reduce flicker in low voltage situations, I think. And you can adjust the upper and lower limits of the lights from within the Lutron app, which could be helpful if full bright is just too much. You can also adjust the fade timing and the status LEDs on the switch itself. This dimmer can pretty much handle any lighting situation. Now, I'm not an LED lighting expert. I'm not even an electricity expert. Huh, shocking, I know. But I think the features in the ELV Plus are geared more to installers or home builders versus the rando on the internet automating his bathroom lights. If you're currently dealing with annoying LED flickers with your current dimmer, then talk to your electrician to see if ELV Plus is right for you. Or just be sure to do a little more research if you're like me and not an LED light expert. Outside of that, the ELV Plus works just like any other Lutron switch. It connects to the Lutron bridge and from there can be integrated with Home Assistant locally without using the cloud. And it does work with the Pico remotes. If you want to pick one of these up or any of the other Lutron products, I've left some affiliate links in the description of this video. Okay, back to testing our new automation. If you're struggling to automate your bathroom lights with motion sensors, I would advise taking a look at how people normally use your bathroom and see if there's any steps in the workflow that you could add some sensors around. I find the door contact sensor to be really reliable in my house, especially when combined with a motion sensor. I dropped affiliate links in the description for that third reality nightlight, the SwitchBot contact sensor, as well as some temp and humidity sensors that we didn't specifically talk about. And don't be afraid to get unconventional when looking for signals that could be used for occupancy. Vibration sensors might work given your floor design, and if you have kids, I suggest flood sensors next to the tub. Maybe even a sound sensor that could detect when the volume gets loud because a certain person is in there. <laughs> if you know, you know. Wait, not for that. Some people like to sing in the bathroom. Anyway, I've been sitting here long enough that my legs are numb, and the lights still haven't turned off. I think we can say we've successfully automated the boring stuff. Okay.